No, I don't waste no time. How are you doing guys and welcome back to a new video for those of you that are new to the channel my name is Joshua Daniel George a social media marketer and online coach and in this video I want to go over the price and structure that you can apply to your social media agency now for those of you that are completely new to the agency space do not worry I will try and explain everything in as much depth and detail in this video as possible with regards to pricing how you can price your services and the way everything is structured for those of you that are a bit more experienced in this and sort of understand what value-based pricing is don't worry um, you know this video will still be valuable to you if you just stick around uh, till later in the video I'll explain a few things on how you can restructure your uh, pricing to earn more money per client without the client uh, not getting a return on investment so whilst maintaining that return on investment for your clients to still be able to get more money per client. So let's just start at the start. The way we price our services is called value-based, which means it's not based on the amount of time that we put in for the clients. It's based on literally the value and the return that we can provide. So if I look at my uh, clients now, I spend about, so we have roughly 25 clients and the way we structure everything is I run all the ads for myself. So every single time we get a new client, I'm the person running the ads. The outreach is completely automated. The sales is completely outsourced. And then when we get a client in, I am the one who runs the ads for, you know, for the client and the one that gets the results for the client. It's just the way we've structured our agency. And I spend about two hours, not even that to be fair, it's about an hour and 30 minutes every single weekday going over the ad accounts and making sure that everything is set up for maximum profitability for the client. So this includes everything from um, competitor analysis to setting up the campaigns to analyzing the data to increasing the ad spend to you know setting up more variations and so on and so forth. Everything can be done within 90 minutes, but I'm managing 25 clients. So if you look at the time spent per client, it's not actually a lot of time that you spend. However, all of these clients are all paying me thousands a month to set all of this up. But it's but like I said, it's not based on the time because if we work off, let's say, an hourly rate, then you know I will be much worse off than I am right now. But we don't work off an hourly rate. We don't give our clients timesheets. We don't tell our clients, oh, I've worked four hours on this account. Uh, my hourly wage is, I don't know, 10 an hour. Therefore, I invoice you 40 you know, euros or dollars or anything like that. We don't do that because that is not the way we work. We work off of how much value we can provide. And it doesn't matter to the clients if you work 20 minutes on the account or if you work 20 hours on the account. At the end of the day, the results stay the same. So let's say, hypothetically speaking, you have a client that's currently making $10,000 a month, but they're not running any ads. You come in and you spend an, an additional $1,000 on the ads for the client, um, and they go from 10 to 20,000 a month. So by investing an additional thousand in the ads, they're making an extra 9K, because you know they're making 20,000 minus the 1,000, minus the 10,000 already making. So for an extra 9K, hypothetically speaking, you could charge them 8,000 a month and they'd still be profiting an extra thousand than they would be without your service. And that is sort of how you need to think, okay? It's not about the time we spend, it's about the return that they can get with your service. So like I said, if you use those numbers that I just mentioned, they spend 1,000 on the ads, 8,000 on you, but they're profiting an extra 10,000. Therefore, they're still making an extra thousand profits. Now, I don't recommend spending 1,000 on the ads and 8,000 on your retainer, but you get the point. So what we try and do is we try and portray to the client what could happen if they were to take you know, us on as an agency and if we were to apply our services to that company. And then what we do is we reverse engineer based on what they're currently spending, the conversion rate of the website, etc. what we could ask for it. 
Usually or more often than not, we'll go anywhere from a thousand to two thousand euros um, a month, you know, per client, and that is sort of what we stick to. Now, for some clients, that might not be profitable. You know, if a client can only afford two hundred dollars in ad spend, then they're not going to be able to afford a two thousand retainer. Or maybe the client has only got a total budget available of let's say fifteen hundred. Then it wouldn't make sense for us to charge a thousand retainer because we we do actually genuinely want to get them a return on investment, right? So what we do is we use the ROI calculator that I shared um, in the Facebook group, completely free. You know, there's no uh, no strings attached, or anything like that. All we need to do is join the Facebook group. Um, I'll link it below, and you get access to it. And with that calculator, we work out what the uh, profit margin percentage is for the client what the return ad spend already is for the clients now obviously we can't really do that if the client hasn't got any experience with ads but we tend to only work with more experienced companies that already have previous data because usually you know they are the ones that can actually afford our retainer okay so what we, we sort of work under the model of helping winners win more rather than um, working with startups etc but that is a story for a different day Okay, so we use, like I said, the profit margin, um, the current ROAS, and our retainer, their ad spends, and then we work out, okay, how can we get them a return on investment, and how much can our retainer be in order to get that return on investment? And you know, for some clients, like I said, it might be a thousand, for some clients, it might be two thousand, but we reverse engineer that return on investment, and that is how we keep our clients happy at all time. We get our clients a return almost every single time not always you know there are always situations where it, it can't or it doesn't work out etc or the conversion rate of the store is lower than anticipated or they lie about their numbers which is you know something that we've also experienced in the past where they say they're doing 50k months and then when we get access to their back end they've done a 50k month once two years ago and now they're roughly around 10k a month situations like that will always arise you know it's something that is part of the game but more often than not, we can work out to a T how much we can ask as a retainer and what their return on investment will be. Okay, so value-based pricing is based on the return or the value that you provide for the client, not on the time you spend. Okay, now with that said, how you can also quickly gauge if it's worth your time actually you know, pursuing the client or reaching out to the client is with a free tool called Koala Inspector. You can do it manually on an Excel sheet if you want, but Koala Inspector is a free tool. Um, it's a Google Chrome plugin, and that will give you the average order value of the company and also the amount of monthly traffic that they get. And then what you can do is, um, obviously, you know, you, what you can do is you can Google what the conversion rate is on average for a store in that industry. But what we like to do is just take the 1%. So what we'll do is we'll look at the amount of monthly visits. Let's say that is 10,000 uh, visits a month. Times that by the average order value. And then times that by the conversion rate of the entire store. And that will give you a figure of what they are roughly making on average. And then you can plug that into your own ROI calculator. You can use my ROI calculator, or you can just use that to sort of gauge how much money they are making and whether or not it's worth your time to pursue. Okay. So like I said, we use the 1%, but if you want to be a bit more specific, you can actually Google what the conversion rate is of an average store um, that is used in Shopify or anything like that in that particular industry. Usually it's between one and 3%. You know, there are not a lot of stores there that have a higher conversion rate. If you find any, then you've definitely got a gem uh, on your hands and you can spend a lot of money. If you know that, let's say 10% of all the store traffic ends up converting, then you can make them a lot of money and ask for a very high retainer in return. Okay, so the value-based pricing on the one end, we calculate it um, on the other end. And then in terms of the structure, we usually go for a flat fee, which means that we ask for a monthly retainer that is you know, excluding the ad spend. So we do not charge them for the ad spend. That comes off their own ad account, their own credit card, etc. We do not touch that. So when they invest into the ads, into our service, you have the retainer, which is like I said, for me, it's between a thousand and two thousand a month. And then they need to spend an additional budget on the ads themselves. So their total investment is actually more than what you're getting. 
which is something that you also need to take into consideration when you're calculating what the return is for them. So it's not as black and white as, okay, my retainer is a thousand and we've got them 2000 back, therefore it's profitable because they also obviously need to account for the ad spend. You know, it doesn't come uh, out of the thin air. The ad spend is obviously, you know, an investment on their part as well. Okay, but just to make things clear, um, you know, the ad spend is, you know, it's, it's their responsibility. You do not invoice them for the ad spend. You do not pay for the ads yourself and then you know send an invoice later. You do not nothing like that. Um, we use their ad accounts, their credit cards, their business manager, and the retainer is yours for you know like I said, literally the value that you provide. We get that upfront, and that is something that I highly recommend. It is to be fair, it's quite standard in this industry. There are not a lot of companies out there that still think that they can. Um, get away with you know paying the invoice at the end of the service, not like that. Um, so it's it's pretty standard. You know, just get your head around it. It's normal in this industry. So don't feel uncomfortable by asking for the money up front. It's the way you know the whole online agency world works. So you ask for the retainer up front, then you spend their their money. You know, obviously um, over the course of a month, and then at the end you work out how much money they made and what the return on investment and return on ad spend for them is. Now with that said, once you start to get better with your um, you know, your services, once you start to get better results, you can also ask for the flat fee plus a percentage of what they make. So let's say for example, their profit margin is 50%, which means that you need to get them a return on ad spend of two. And then what you can say to the client is, okay, well, if we hit a return on ad spend of two, then um, we'll take the page conversion value, We'll divide that by you know, the profit margin, and then I'll take a percentage of that. So what you can say is, I want an extra 10% you know, for, for the money we make. So let's say um, your retainer is 1,000, um, you make them 50,000 over that month, um, they've got a 50% profit margin, which means that they've profited 25%, uh, sorry, $25,000 then what you can say is, well, I'll take 20, uh, 10% of that, which is an extra two and a half K for you. And that's how you can earn more money per client. Now, obviously with the whole iOS 14 update, that can be a bit more tricky, a bit more difficult. Uh, more often than not, the ads manager will only report what is actually happening because a lot of data is lost you know, due to the whole iOS 14 update. So what a lot of other agencies, um, even in and around my coaching programs are now also doing is asking for a percentage of ad spend. And obviously the percentage will decrease with the amount that they spend. So what you could say is, okay, well, um, we charge a flat rate for anyone spending less than 10K. Once you spend between 10 and 25K a month on ads, we ask for 10%. Once you spend between 25 and 50K a month, we ask for 9% and so on and so forth. So uh, the more they spend, obviously you, you can't really say, well, I want 20% uh, of ad spend when, they when they're spending like 50K a month, uh, 500K a month, sorry. You know, because obviously that will be a lot for that uh, company. Obviously, if you can show them that it's making them money, then you know, we need to go back to the value-based pricing. Um, rule, but still, you know, the percentage will decrease with the amount that they spend. The more they spend, the less percentage you take, but still, you should be profiting more on, on your end because, you know, 10% of 500k is obviously more than, uh, you know, 20% of 5k. So, that is another way of pricing your services. So, the flat fee plus a percentage of ad spend. And then, lastly, to wrap it all up, what you can also do is ask for a setup fee which uh, I, I don't do personally, you know, everything that we set up is part and parcel of our service. But obviously, you know, the first month will always be the most time intensive for you because you need to set up the audiences, you need to restructure the ad accounts, you need to get everything up and running, you need to analyze the data of the previous agency, you need to, you know, get everything set up. And obviously that will take more time than a client that's already been, you know, part of your, um, agency clientele you know for a couple of months so then you can ask for an additional setup fee if you think that is necessary um, and that will obviously you know be able to allow you to increase the amount of money that you earn per client but just the most important thing guys uh, out of all of this is the better the return for the client so the more money you make the client the longer they will stay so it's not actually worth in my opinion it's not worth setting up these additional fees if the client's gonna leave you after one month because it's not profitable. Whereas maybe if you ask for just a thousand flat fee but the client stays for 12 months, 
then you profit 12K rather than saying, okay, well, it's a thousand plus an a thousand setup fee plus a percentage of ad spend plus a percentage of the page conversion value and they leave after one month. Yes, that one month might be more than just a thousand in ad spend, uh, just a thousand retainers, sorry, but over the course of the lifetime value of the client, you will not have made as much, okay? And that is sort of how I like to think. Think long term and always take the uh, return on investment for the client as your North Star, as the number one thing that you need to achieve because the happier the client, the more referrals you'll get, the better your reputation of the agency, you know, on and offline. And like I said, the more money you'll make in the long run as well. So I hope you got something out of this. Any questions regarding the pricing, please, you know, do not hesitate to leave a comment down below. I answer 99.9% um, .9 of the comments, unless, you know, it's an older video and I didn't happen to see or anything like that. If you want to speak to me directly, you know, there's links below as well on how you can do that. Um, you know, we have paid programs, we have coaching programs, etc. So feel free to check that out. And also, if you want to be part of our communities, we have two Facebook groups, the Lifestyle Design community, as well as the Agency Scale and Fast Track community. And in the latter, we have the ROI calculator. So feel free to check those out as well. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and see you all in the next video.